Good morning, children. Hope you all are safe. Last class, you already studied about how we can separate insoluble substances from the mixtures. Insoluble substances from a liquid. For example, you know that when sand mixed with the water and you had already zinc, oh, we can separate it, isn't it? It allowed for sedimentation, then decantation. Then you have already studied or separating of different types, you know, through filtration also we can separate the insoluble substances by using the process of loading. That is by adding the alum, you can also separate the insoluble particles from the solid, sorry, in the, from the liquid. Today you are going to study how we can separate soluble substances from the liquid. Separation of soluble substances from the liquid. How we can separate the soluble substances from the liquid. You know that soluble substances. Can you say an example of soluble substances? Substances that can mix with the or that can dissolve in the liquid. Such substances are known as soluble substances. Can you say an example of soluble substance? Yes, right. Salt is an example. Then sugar is an example. All these are substances uh, that can be completely dissolved in water. So in such condition also we can separate the substances, this soluble substances from the liquid. And the main important method, it is the evaporation. Who can tell me what is meant by evaporation? Who can tell me what is meant by evaporation? The changing of liquid into which form? Gaseous form or vapor form. Changing of liquid into which form? Liquid into vapor form. And this process is known as what? Evaporation. Evaporating of liquid into gaseous form. You know after washing the cloth, we usually hang it for or hang it for what? Drying under the sun. Hope you all have seen it. And you know, wind as well as heat, they both help in evaporation. What all things help in evaporation? Wind and heat. This heat from the sun and you know, wind. These two are the things that help in evaporation. That you all already know. And when we want to dry the fruits, dry the fish and all, the main process that is taking place there is the changing of Water content or liquid content in it into which form? Vapor form. Clear? So that process is known as evaporation. Changing of water into water vapor. Clear? So heat and wind, these are the main two factors that helps in, that helps in evaporation. And you know that usually the clothes that we are hanging under the sun, it's just because sun helps, sun's heat helps to evaporate. Then, uh, you know, wind also same time. Uh, inside, you know, when it is heavy raining, no, we are uh, just hanging the cloth inside our house and you need to switch on the fan also. You all have seen it so many times. So here from this, we could understand that wind and heat, these are the two factors that help in evaporation. Clear? Yes. So now, our, uh, what concentration is what? How we can separate the soluble substances from the water or from the liquid you know that process evaporation just see how it is done you know from where we get the salt from seawater so when the seawater evaporates we will get what salt when seawater evaporates we get the salt is it easy for us to evaporate whole seawater you know sea is so vast is it easy to evaporate let the water evaporate from the sea does it happen as such no it is impractical or we can't able to do it so in such situations know the water is collected in the evaporation pond you all know what is meant by pond evaporation ponds what is collected in the evaporation ponds a small area this sea water will be collected in the shape of a pond it will be artificially artificially made this water is collected in the evaporation pond and what happened you know they let this water evaporate from this pond, they let the water evaporate and what happened? They will get what? Salt. You know that this salt consists of, you know, uh, sand may be there, dust particles may be there and they need to be purified. 
That's the second step. First step is for first this water evaporates. When this water gets evaporated, the balance will be what? It's the salt. Then after purification, we will get the salt from it. Clear? So that is the method used to separate soluble substances from the liquid. And what is that process? Evaporation. Here, this in the case of seawater, the seawater is collected in the evaporation pond because it is uh, impossible to you know uh, let all the water from the sea it evaporate so just to avoid that they want to make it easy they will collect that water in the evaporation ponds then from that area they allow the water to get evaporated and the balance what will be there salt will be there and after purification we can use that salt clear so that's the method of separating soluble substances from the liquid now we can move on to how we can separate Separating of immiscible liquids. How we can separate immiscible liquid? Separating immiscible liquid. Who can tell me what is meant by immiscible liquid? Liquid that cannot dissolve in the water. That is an example of an immiscible liquid. Yes, oil is an example of immiscible liquid, you know. That is an example of miscible liquid. Tell me what is miscible liquid? Liquid that can completely mix us with the water or dissolve in the water. Such liquid is known as what? Miscible liquid. And what about immiscible liquid? Liquids that will not dissolve in water. Such liquids are known as what? Immiscible liquid. So as you all know, typical example, it is the oil. You know, any type of coconut oil, the ginger oil, any type of oil or fat, they are completely insoluble in water. So what happened? How can we separate? The last chapter, you when, when we were discussing about it, you had already seen. When we uh, add a spoon of oil into a glass of water, what will happen to that oil? It will float on the water, isn't it? They will float on the water and they can be separated by which process? Decantation. They can be separated by which process? Decantation. Then tell me what is meant by decantation? Yes, pouring off the liquid without disturbing the sediment. So very slowly when we add, uh, you know, two or three teaspoons of oil into the glass of water, even though when we stir continuously after some time, you can see that they float on the water. What this oil is float on the water. So, you know, of, without disturbing the water, you can just what decant or pour off that water very slowly into another glass. This is the method of separating what? Miscible liquid. Sorry, immiscible liquids. Now we can uh, go to the another section. For separating some substances, we are supposed to use different, not only one technique, we are supposed to use more than one method of separation. More than one method of separation. In some situations, we are supposed to do it. Normally, we have already discussed about only one type of separation. But to separate some types of substances, we are supposed to use what? Two, one or sometimes two, sometimes three different types of separation. For example, when this sand and oil is seen in the water, oil and in the water then how will we separate these three oil sand oil plus water just imagine when we add into the glass of water we are adding the soil to it or sand to it then oil to it what will happen to the sand you had already seen the last class also what will happen to the sand will it float on the water absolutely not then what happens tell me Yes, the, the sand will settle at the bottom of the glass. Then what will happen to this oil? It will float on the water, right? Yes. So the sand settles at the bottom of the glass. Why the sand settles? Why we can't see the sand floating on the water? 
Yes, because sand is heavier than water, so it settles at the bottom of the glass. Then what happened to this oil? You know, oil is lighter than water. So what happens? It will float on the water. So first what we can do? Yeah, we can decan this water, decan this oil into another bowl. Then what is left there? You know, the sand is sedimented. You can use the filtration method. Decantation also, but if you want to separate the sand, you need to do what? We need to uh, filter, you know, by using the filter paper, by using any filtering devices. You can, you had already seen all these techniques in the last class. So you can uh, filter it, then we can separate these three substances. So, it's an example of separating different substances or different methods of separation are using in a simple solution because you have seen here sand is there oil is there we want to separate these three so first you know oil is lighter than water so it can be seen on the top of the water so we can decant it then what is left there water as well as the sand then what we should do normally as we discussed the last class we can decant that water then okay then we can filter it different methods we can adopt but filtration is you know a very easy method is filtration that time, no, we don't want to worry about this shaking and all. We can just pour the water, whole sand and water. And in the filter, we will get what sand and water will remain as such. So, these are the different met different separation methods that we can adopt. Clear? So, you had already seen. Till now, you uh, know different how we can separate the solid substance from the solid. You had already studied. Who can tell me different methods? Yes. Hand picking. Zeeving. Thrashing and burnowing. These are the different methods of separating solid substances from the solid. Next about the liquid. How we can separate immiscible substances, sorry, the insoluble substance from the liquid. It's by, yeah, first one, you know, decantation, for sedimentation, decantation, filtration and loading. Now, immiscible substances, you know, by decantation and we can adopt or we can use different methods for separating different substances. Now, we can move to the last section of this chapter that you are going to study about different types of solutions. Types of solutions, you know. Normally, you know, tell me what is meant by the solution. When we add a spoon of salt to a glass of water, then what will we get? Which solution? Salt solution, isn't it? When we add salt plus water, so to a glass of water, what will we, what we will get? Salt solution. Clear? So, what is the solution? You know, salt is known as the solute. Water is the solvent. And the result, what we get, it is the solution. Solute is the solid substance that we are adding into the liquid. Solute is the solid substance that we are adding into the water or into the liquid. So, the solute, then what solvent? Any liquid is the solvent. Any liquid. Here is water is the liquid. So, we can call water as the solvent. So, when these both mix together, what we will get? It's a solution. Combination of these two. Clear? So, so, salt is the solute. What is a solute? It's a solid substance that we are adding into the liquid that is known as the solvent. Sorry, that is known as the solute. Then, what is a solvent? It's a liquid. Any liquid can be called as a solvent. Then what's the result? It is the solution. So salt is the salt is the solute, water is the solvent, and resulting solution is what? Salt solution. Similarly, we can say that sugar. Sugar is an example of solute. Then as usual, water. Then what we get? Sugar solution. Sugar solution. Clear? So this is about the salt so, 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 solute. Solvent and very very important terms solute, solvent and the solution. So now we can divide the solution into two categories. Solution can be divided into two. You know that we are going to study. Unsaturated solution. Unsaturated solution and 
saturated solution. Unsaturated solution and saturated solution. Clear? Two different types of solutions are there. Now we can see what is meant by this unsaturated solution. Clear? I'm taking a glass. Oh, adding you know some amount of water to it. See, say glass of sugar, sorry, salt. Just see, this is a plain water. Just I am adding one teaspoon of salt to it. Hope you can see it. This I can mix it very easily. You can see slight change in the color of the water. Am I right? Slight change is there because this salt mixes with the water. And this solution is known as the salt solution. Salt mixes with the water is known as the salt solution. So this is an unsaturated solution. You know what is unsaturated? This solution is ready to receive some more of the solute. Here solute is the word salt. So this water is ready to receive again few more spoons of salt. So I am adding the second spoon. You can see the color of the water slightly changing. Hope you can see it. The color of the water slowly changes. No. So when I mix this, no. When I taste this water from anywhere of this glass, when I taste this water, it will be salty only. When I taste, because I am just stirring it continuously, isn't it? So the salt has mixed. Equally in all the part. Equal mixing has taken place. If I am not stirring it properly, then what will happen? Some part of the glass has got what? More salty taste. Another part does not have any taste of the salt. It can happen. You know when we prepare the lime juice and all. Hope you all have experienced it at least once. You know when after adding the sugar, you know just stir it like this. And you know, uh, sometimes you know when we taste the water from the Top only we are tasting the water. That times you know you don't feel tasty. Then again you add sugar to it. Then again you are stirring like this. Sugar takes more time than salt to mix with the water. Then you are if you don't no if you don't have any experience just try it. Uh, salt can comparatively easier to mix, but sugar takes more time. So again now you will add. Then finally no okay the uh, when we taste no yeah. Correct salt is, sugar is there. Then after serving, no balanced juice. If we try to drink that time only, you may feel that no nah, extreme sugar is there. Extreme sugar is there because that is not a homogeneous mixture. So two types of mixtures are there. First one, it is the homogeneous mixture. Homo. First one, it is the homogeneous mixture. As I told you, this is a homogeneous mixture. Because I have mixed the salt very thoroughly very with the full water. So the taste of the water is same throughout this glass. If I taste from the top or if I taste from the bottom, the taste of this, this water does not change. Such mixtures are known as what? Homogeneous mixture. Homo means what? Same. Homogeneous mixture. What is meant by homogeneous mixture? If the solution has got the or the when the solute is uniformly distributed. When we have distributed, that means how we will understand we have uniformly distributed. Because when we taste the water, if the taste is the same throughout the glass, then we can say that it is a homogeneous mixture. This mixture is a homogeneous mixture. Clear? Yes. So, and this is the unsaturated also. That means now how many spoons of salt we have already added? Two teaspoons, isn't it? Yes. Then no, this is ready. Again, this uh, water is ready to receive more salt. See, I'm adding one more spoon. Yes, I'm stirring. You could see the color of the water is again changing. Hope you have seen it. Color of the water is again changing. See, so how many spoons I have added totally here? Three spoons. Okay. See, three spoons. Again, 
this glass is or water is ready to receive yes again now three spoons already added keep in mind that three spoons already added again this is unsaturated for example when we are eating the breakfast if your mother first give you uh, she gives you one dosha then okay then uh, ah, it won't be then if she may shall i give you one more then you may say okay okay then two sometimes three then you may say no 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 yeah, my stomach is full i don't want more if your stomach need more, then you may say that your stomach is unsaturated. This example only I said, don't say that, just for a comparison. Then that means your stomach is ready to receive one or two more doshas. But sometimes if you eat three to four doshas, then if your mother is asking for more, please give it one more, then you may say that my stomach is full, please don't compel. That condition is known as what? Saturated. Now this is the unsaturated solution. That means see. This water is again ready to receive what? Again ready to receive the salt. So I am adding the fourth spoon. Hope you have seen it. Fourth spoon. But now I could feel that it is not easy for me to mix it properly. Difficulty is there. For when I added first and second spoon, it was so easy for me. But when I added the third spoon, yes, slight difficulty was there. But when I added the fourth spoon, again the difficulty increases the same manner. When you eat the first dosha, you will comfort because you were hungry that time. But when you start second, okay, again come. But third, no. Mm. But the fourth, mm, too difficult. So same manner, see. But still, I could this the fourth spoon. Keep in mind, I had already added what? How many spoons? Four spoons I have already added. Z and I'm just mixing also because yes, I'm trying you know. Difficult again. No, yes, this water is telling me, yeah, please, yes, I'm ready. Give me one more spoon. So I'm trying to give one more spoon. This is the fifth one. See, fifth spoon I am adding. Yes, I could feel the difficulty is there. It won't be easy for me to mix this salt water. Salt in this water. Yes, this is the which spoon? Which fifth spoon? Fifth spoon of salt I have added. So, yeah. I think this water cannot dissolve this fifth spoon completely. This water cannot add completely add this fifth spoon i think so yes please just observe that hope you have seen it yeah the salt is there in this spoon it doesn't completely dissolve this but if you know if i try sometimes it may be possible for me to mix it this is the fifth spoon so i think this fifth maximum this water can allow to Mix this fifth spoon and that condition is known as the solubility. What is meant by this solubility? The maximum amount of solute which is, which is needed to be added to a liquid or the solvent. Maximum amount. Here I have already added five spoons. I think this is the solubility but still you know observe and you look no. I think only four spoons. You could see that. Bottom. Can you see it? You can see the salt as the sediment here. Can you see it? Four spoons, I think. For maximum, I could add the four spoons into this glass of water. That's solubility condition. That means, you know, if your stomach is full with three doshas, that is the solubility condition. If your stomach is full with the four doshas, that is the solubility condition. And your saturated level. That's the same manner. The water saturated level of this solution, the amount of solvent, the amount of solute it can absorb. Then I think the four spoons, the fifth spoon when I add, no, you could see that salt powder. Hope you have seen that. Then just see if I add sixth spoon, what will happen? If I add the sixth spoon, see, if I'm adding the sixth spoon, I could feel the difficulty while stirring also. It is not easy. Yes. Sugar is too difficult than this. 
when I try, no, I, I could easily understand or you can understand that, no, salt is comparatively easier to mix rather than the this. sugar. See, I have already added how many spoons? Six spoons. Then hope you have seen the salt settle at the bottom. This solution is known as what? Saturated. No, then if I add more salt to it, you know what will happen? This is the seventh spoon I am adding to it. See? Seventh spoon of salt I have added to it. I am mixing it, but you can see what will happen. See? Seventh spoon of salt I have added. See? This started to settle at the bottom. As sediment we can see, even though this salt is a soluble substance, you all know salt is a soluble substance. But limitation is there. This water, this solvent is also has got limitation to absorb it. So see, now we can see the salt settling at the bottom. That condition, it already it has reached a saturated level. When you say that your stomach is full, again your mother compels you to eat the food, something you may vomit it. Am I right? You may vomit or you may feel some other stomach problem. Similarly, this water, you know that the salt settles at the bottom. Such solution is known as what? Saturated solution. And you can make this saturated solution unsaturated. You can change this saturated solution to unsaturated by only one method that is heating. When I heat this water, when I pour this into a bowl, when I heat this water, Within, then, within no time, no, it will change into what water. It can melt in this. Very easily it will it melts. Normally, no, if I add continuously, I could see the salt at the bottom of the glass. But when I start, when I boil this, when I heat this, I could easily see that what will happen? It will melt and it will mix us with the or it will dissolve in the water. So I can make the saturated solution unsaturated by heating. Saturated solution can be made to unsaturated by only one process that is the heating. You all know I have eaten gulab jamun, isn't it? You know what uh, that uh, liquid sugar syrup is there. Then how do they make the sugar syrup? It's by adding numerous spoons of sugar into the water and how can they make the sugar syrup by heating only by heating the sugar can easily melt when we add sugar and water you know into the two or three glasses of water two glasses of water we can add you know 10 20 spoons of sugar it will uh, change us into what sugar syrup you all have seen it for preparation of cake and all sugar syrups are using so for making some sweet items also they are, uh, people are using sugar syrup so how we are making the sugar syrup by adding water afterwards want to heat it if you simply add no sugar will not dissolve completely two to three or three to four as you had already seen in the case of salt some uh, two to three i think the maximum four spoons can be completely dissolved in this water fifth sixth and seventh no it started to settle at the bottom same same, same and also sugar also but when we heat it no very easily when we heat it you have seen that very beautifully the bottom you know i think uh, two spoons more than two spoons are there settled at the bottom of such a solution is not a saturated another important question you can expect how we can change the saturated solution to unsaturated how by, who can tell me the answer? By heating. By heating, we can change the unsaturated solution to the saturated solution. So now you have studied about different types of solution, unsaturated and saturated. Unsaturated means what? The solution is ready to receive or accept some more of the solute. Then what is saturated? The maximum level it has reached. You know, it's it not ready to absorb any more of the solute. And that condition is known as what? Solubility. So here the solubility condition of this water, it is nearly how many spoons? I think four spoons, four spoons of salt. When I added more than that, it was easy, difficult for me to stir also. But I think, but they, what happened to them? They sit at the bottom. But when I heat it, no. And so while heating saturated solution, we can change that into unsaturated. So in this chapter, you have studied about different types of separation techniques and what's the need of separation. Am I right? Who can tell me why do we separate substances? Yes, to remove 
unwanted materials and to separate useful substances. Then you are, you are seeing how we can separate the solid substances, liquid substances and now you studied about the different uh, types of solutions and uh, what is the uh, you know solid added to the uh, liquid that is known as a solute. Liquid can be called as the solvent and the resultant mixture is known as the solution. Hope it is clear. So dear children as I used to say every time, do the exercises completely, study the question answers. Complete the notes. If any doubt is there, you are free to call me through WhatsApp or contact me through WhatsApp or you can call me. Okay, children. And then we meet in the next class. It's bye from me. Stay safe. Be safe, children. Bye.